What's up, everybody? Jesse Ziegler and Rennie Skaysbrook from Cycle News. Thanks for watching. Today, we're starting um, a new thing where we start fights on the internet about which bike is the best. And today, we're putting up a KTM 890 Adventure R and a Ducati Desert X together because there is no way you're going to talk to your friends or family about which one of these bikes is best without starting a fight. Yeah, they're, that, they're that close. Yeah. Uh, we got a new comparison test coming out in the magazine. You can definitely check that out. We got all the specs, deep dive into everything, plus first tests on each of these bikes. Yep. There's tons of stuff in that story, but for the video, we want to get into the meat and potatoes of these two bikes um, and why we love them uh, separately and why we think they're a good match together. Yep. They're, they're kind of cool. So let's get into it. Yeah, brand new bike, uh, 2023 Ducati Desert X. I did the launch for that bike out in... Uh, like Colorado? Colorado, yeah. yeah, which was just amazing. Um, as, as as what happens a lot of the time when you go to launches, they always put their best foot forward. But a was, great spot, yeah, yeah, amazing place to ride a motorcycle. Uh, extremely difficult to fault in isolation. Um, beautiful bike, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I know how much work Ducati has put into that bike. It's not a overnight bike. They've been developing the thing for about four years now. Um, right. uh, but yeah, so the bike is a very, very well thought out, very well executed bike. Um, it is an extremely important bike for Ducati. Their first real ADV bike, let's be honest. Um, yeah, I agree. Yep. Know. And really hitting, I think what we agree is like the meat of the market right now. They call it the mid-size ADV market. And it's only mid-size because it's not a middle-sized motorcycle. They're massive. No, They're almost yeah. a liter bike they're almost a thousand cc's um but they're not 1250 cc's so that's why they're mid-size the second tier down in displacement in the adventure category the biggest category that's got the best sales and the most interest in the market by far oh, we're talking yeah. tenery 700 all the way up to the class leader that we're putting this bike up against to now yep. which is the ktm 890 adventure r um really really tough uh, task for Ducati to come into this market. Um, it's not a pleasant place, I would say, for a new bike to come into. Yep. KTM has set that standard in the 890R performance, what that bike can do on-road and off-road uh, with the package of the really effective electronics that are easy to manage, but really we're talking performance in a KTM way. Really precise, really hard-hitting, yep. um, you know, ready to race yeah, and adventure. That goes no through, doubt about it. That goes through everything that KTM does. Yeah, very on, on the, brand for them. They don't try to be in a thing that they're not. You nope, know, nope, you know what you're it's, getting. It's in the brand. Yeah, <laughs> so, so when, when Ducati comes in, you don't really know what to expect. Like you said, they've never been here before. They're coming in with a beautiful bike. Yeah. I mean, it looks, it looks rally-inspired. It has adventure touring, like good looks to it that has nailed it so you think is it just going to be a pretty face is it going to be you know a performance is it going to be all motor because you know they're machismo is out there and they're just building great ducati motors because getting that combination to work in any off-road setting even if it's just mellow dirt isn't easy like it's not easy to make a bike that looks great and handles well for well, all the terrain that they're going into They've got a good base with it so that 937 cc motor right. has come out in the what do we got the hyper motor SP, it's come out in the Super Sport, it's come out in the new Monster. Not new Monster, right? Um, so all these. Uh, all these bikes share the same basic platform. Obviously, when you start talking suspension and everything, it yeah, goes yeah. completely different. But it is a very adaptable motor, that thing. It's proven, it's proven its adaptability in different yeah. uh, ideal use settings, but still all on the street. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, the one thing with, the, with Ducatis, any modern Ducati, is they are electronically wired to the gills. So, yeah, definitely. You know, we're just looking here, six, right, six riding modes, four different power modes, mm -hmm. and then you go through the loose wheelie control, brake control, up and down quick shift. These are the control. these are the acronym games I'm not going to get into right now because you can read about them. But yeah. the, we're talking anything you want to do in electronically, the Ducati can do it as long as you can find it in the menu to do it and yeah. turn it on and off yourself. And that's going to, we'll get into that in a little bit, um, the, the electronic interface anyway. But um, let's get down to how similar these bikes are on paper, I think. It's kind of interesting because yep. they're, they're, all right, they're not, 
not cost. We'll get into that second. Yeah. But they're about the same size as far as suspension travel goes, seat yeah. height goes, uh, fuel capacity it. goes. They're really close in all those specs people are looking at. Yeah, well, the, the KTM gets, I think it's about 0.7 of an inch more rear wheel travel. Yeah. Um, sits a little bit taller. Uh, it's got, uh, actually has a little bit lower seat height, 0.2 of an inch seat height, which- Almost, whatever. almost close. Yeah. yeah, almost the same. It's the same thing, but- Chassis wise, when you look at them, that's where they start getting different completely. Yeah, I mean, so um, if you're looking at suspension travel, they're within a half inch or so front and rear of each other. The KTM has a little more front and rear, it's like 0.4 in the front, yeah. 0.7 more in the rear of an inch. Yeah. Not not a significant difference. Fuel capacity, Ducati actually has a tiny bit more, like yeah. a like, like, or something. like a tenth five, or yeah, two tenths point, of a tank, 5.54 gallons for the Ducati, five, uh. 5.3 for the KTM. Yeah, so we're really close on fuel capacity. Seat height, the KTM actually is a little bit, a uh, little lower, like a third of an inch lower or something like that. Yeah, so seat heights for Ducati is 34.4, 34.6 for the KTM. Again, we're talking really close specs on these things. And then you start noticing something that really stands out, and that's mm -hmm. chassis dimensions and sort of uh, angles. Yep. So if you start getting into the specs a little bit more, uh, 63.3 inches for the Ducati wheelbase, 60.2 for the KTM. Now, that is a substantial amount, like three inches at the tire. That's a huge amount. That's outside of the chain adjustment. You can't exactly, make that. Yeah. You can't make that difference on your no, chain. You're chucking <laughs> links in there at that point. You're gonna have to extend some swing arm on the yeah. back of the KTM to get that distance. And the other one is you got 27.6 rake versus 26.3. Mm -hmm. So the KTM is not only shorter, it's also steeper. Mm -hmm. So you've got a much twitchier, probably more responsive if you mm -hmm. act like that, uh, more responsive chassis. The offshoot of that is that the Ducati is ridiculously stable. Yeah, um, right. Like you can, as we did up in those mountains, like we were running over all kinds of things. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's just not twitchy. It goes in a straight line. Yeah, it's, yeah. it is a little bit slower to turn than the KTM. As you would expect after yeah, knowing that spec, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't have that nervous twitchiness that the KTM has. No, it really doesn't. I, I didn't look at the specs at all before I rode the bikes. I kind of do that all the time. I just like to ride them and get my input on them. And in, immediately I was like, this thing is stable. Mm -hmm. um, the swing arm feels like it's connected to the dirt and pushing the front end wherever you want it to go. It doesn't feel like um, they're separate and it feels like a long bike. It feels yeah. longer. And I didn't, I think I rode the Ducati first and I was like, this feels really stable, really good. And then I hopped on the KTM and I was like, whoa, this is like the massively precise weapon now yeah. that I didn't have that perception on the KTM before I rode the Ducati. After riding the Ducati, I was like, whoa, this thing is very, very small feeling front to rear mm -hmm. and also very steep in the front end like it is. Yeah. Um, but that does give it a little bit, uh, almost less comfortable feeling off road. Yeah, because your your front end forever. wanders more, it, yeah. it moves around more because it's got so much like, uh, it's so close to you. Yeah. So uh, that was the immediately big difference I noticed between the two. Mm. And after reading the chassis specs, you can just be like, oh well, clearly that's yeah. <laughs> it's on paper. Yeah. It's not a mystery why this bike feels like it's long, stable, planted in the Ducati side, and the KTM feels a little more nervous, mm. um, but also more precise if you're getting into tighter, you know, I more think, rowdy stuff. I think also the KYB suspension on the Ducati is much more suited to longer adventure touring. Yeah. It's a know. more, uh, not pedestrian cause we, you can get pretty rowdy on you it, can, but yeah. it's, it's but not as uh, it doesn't have as much upward potential as the KTM WP nah, like stuff. That, that's just like that WP ready to jump. Fork, the, yeah. WP it's a 40, what is it? I don't remember what it is. 40, six i think i'm not sure yeah um yeah but the explorer fork that's been in development with the bike from its inception yeah. back in 2017 it's an off-road so fork. it's <laughs> as the bike i mean obviously ktm owns wp yeah. so it has grown with the bike it's it's ridiculous what the suspension on the ktm 890 adventure r lets you do yeah as an adventure bike and it really is that combined with the low slung fuel chassis yeah. that makes that bike so good at handling off-road situations and on-road like it's a benefit on-road too but what was surprising to me was a the chassis dimensions of the ducati clearly you can feel those but b it doesn't have a top heavy feeling the ducati no. and and you look at the bike as like a adventure snob like me you're like that thing's gonna be top heavy when it starts to tip over it's gonna feel super heavy it doesn't yeah somehow the looks of the bike put the fuel tank up higher than it 
than it physically is to the center of gravity on the bike. And it could have something to do with the L twin, you know, keeping yep. uh, engine, you know, uh, gyroscopic forces lower and, and not affecting it that much. Well, it's but also a much bigger engine when you look at it. I mean, yeah, yeah. L twin versus parallel twin. Yeah. Like you've got an engine that's that big yeah. versus one that's that big. Yeah, so it's, it's got like an anchor inside the yeah. chassis that feels like it's holding the weight lower than the tank perception is on the Ducati. Yeah. The Ducati looks like it's top heavy because the tank's up there. It's not. Mm. It doesn't handle that way. It handles nothing but solid and stable yeah. to me. Yeah. Where do where KTM's just own that market because of the low fuel. It's funny because KTM has this like separate kind of, I guess, mentality with it. It's much more again, we go back to that ready to race mentality. Yeah. But if you look at everything else that's in the market, you look at the Tenere, you look at the Tuareg, you look yep. at the uh Tiger, mm-hmm. even the G S eight fifty, yeah, which is now BMWs. gone like pretty much to the bottom of the of yeah. the uh, list where it used to be the king. Yeah. So it's kind of started now, KTM's kind of gone off in their own route, whereas the Ducati, Tiger, you know, yeah. whatever else, they're kind of now in the, s- the same game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting to p- kind of put them against these two, whereas one is very hard edge, racy. Yeah. The other one is the more racier of the rest of them. Of the rest of them, yeah, I guess. Sense. <laughs> yeah, sure. So it's, it's funny how KTM's managed to carve that niche now Really, I mean, someone's going to have to come up with something pretty extreme. And like the Honda, when they bought out that Trans Alp, I mean, that thing. I hope it's better than what it looks on the paper because yeah, it doesn't look as it doesn't look as serious in this no. class of being like you know you, you say serious, but like you, most people don't ride it like the KTM brochure shows of Chris Birch jumping off stuff. <laughs> and I, I certainly don't either. Isn't but the person who rides like Chris Birch, yeah, that's Chris, Chris Birch. Birch. Yeah, <laughs> but the you can you can feel that performance when you ride it as a normal person too. When you get into yeah. an off camber with a rain rut, the KTM doesn't go there. Yeah. Um, you uh, really some of the other bikes, nice. some of the other bikes, you're like, I got to make sure I stay out of that. And the KTM, you're like, if I go in that, I'm probably also going to be okay. The Ducati's getting dangerously close on that side of things at competing with the KTM. It's sure. really close. Yeah. I which, mean, which was a surprise. Yeah. You just have to be, you gotta be quick and deliberate with your movements on the, K, on the KTM. Yeah. Whereas you can, I, mean, I hate to use the term lazy is not quite the right word, but like, you, you I'd say the Ducati is more forgiving. Yeah. It's, you can yeah. plow through things easier. It doesn't react to the terrain underneath you as much because it has a much more stable chassis. It's yeah. just all about stability. Yeah. If you're going to want to turn precisely after that stump and you got to nail the front end pressure, the Ducati is not going to be the bike that does that. Yeah. The KTM will do that like a dirt bike. Yeah. The K- the Ducati will blow that turn a little bit because you're going to want to steer with the rear end on it. You're going to want to like, you know, drift a little more on the Ducati. And the KTM's like, oh, I can drift, right? Be sharp and precise. I can pop a wheelie. I can do a stoppy here. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And the, and the, and the Ducati's definitely more stable, more relaxed, chassis handling mm-hmm. version of, of of the adventure class. But so a. They're they're pretty close on all the all the important specs like suspension travel weight is almost the same they're like four hundred ninety pounds full versus four hundred ninety two ninety two so we're two pounds the fuel capacity is the same so these things are neck and neck chassis is going to give you a more relaxed ride on the Ducati because yep. of the dimensions alone and the suspension performance yep that's it so now is it winter decided not really well, there's well, yeah. like we got to go deeper we got to dig into these things some more so we got to go into the big, uh the big white elephant the, in the room is the price yeah price and what you're getting for your money because exactly. that's a big thing this market is full of options from absolutely basic nothing ten thousand dollar tenere 700 that works perfectly fine for a person that's looking for the simplicity side to the ducati on the other end of the spectrum with every electronic gizmo and gadget on there and a premium price Big differences in price, $17,095 MSRP for the Ducati versus $14,199 MSRP for the KTM. So a big difference on the base price. Yeah, big chunk of change. However, you with the KTM, you buy the base bike and then you have to put the other bits on, which is like the rally mode, just yep. need, which is just a plug and play thing. Right. Whereas the Ducati, you get one bike, you get everything ready to go. Yeah. Um, so, they don't make a they don't make a base model Ducati Desert X at the dealership no. that's like stripped of the good wheels or stripped of no. this or stripped of the electronic package. It's one and done. Put a key in it, you get everything. The one thing also, I mean, we'll get back to the price and tick. One thing I forgot: the back end of the Ducati looks very like 
almost incomplete. Yeah, like unfinished. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the reason it looks that way is because you can then fit on the uh, auxiliary tank. Yeah, it has which potential for out. more fuel capacity. Yeah, pumps it out to 7.9 gallons, which is the exact same as what you get in a GS1250 uh, Adventure. It's a real long, long distance capability. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why you would ever want to go that long without <laughs> filling up. Because I wouldn't, just, for sure. Yeah. I mean, unless you're riding out into the Tenere Desert. The there, are, there are spots in the world still that people People ride motorcycles that they yeah. need that range and they don't want to carry an auxiliary fuel bag or something like that so i see it but um a, a you know a I mean, take in their direction for offering that it's good that they've designed it so it's a modular system i found overall that the ktm was a little too twitchy for me um yeah it's also quite i guess cramped overall like the cockpit's kind of cramped mm-hmm. uh, i found the ducati because i am i label myself as base to like an early intermediate off-road rider. Mm-hmm. Like I can ride off-road. I'm terrible at motocross. <laughs> <laughs> so I found out recently. Um, but, you know, I can go adventure riding and I can hang pretty well. Yeah, and, definitely. And that's fine. But I also don't need the edginess that the KTM has. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally would go for for the Ducati. Plus having all the electronics at my, t- at my fingertips – um, right. Mind you, the electronics, I didn't love the ease of use with the electronics yep. with that kind of strange dash that they've got mm-hmm. with the phone. Yep. That's not really, I'm not really down with that. Uh, but overall, I would be choosing, if it was a, if it was my money, I'd be throwing it down on the, on the Ducati. It's, it's, an, it's an easy argument that a lot of people should agree with, in my opinion. Um, the two things that hold me back from just being like full on Ducati here is that... Um, the electronics on the KTM are massively functional. Yeah. Like the rally mode. So you, you pay another 500 bucks on top of that 14 and a half K and you get like a, the, the most complete adventure bike you need. Anybody needs really uh, the, the, the rally mode, all those things that come with it. Like you can adjust slip on the fly with yeah. one button on the left hand as you're going through terrain. You have too much slip, you can just yeah. dial it down. You you haven't don't you want you want to party more, you just turn up the party knob. Um there there's it's everything you need. It's easy to use. The interface, the dashboard's bright. It's easy to control. Um it 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 just doesn't do anything wrong. No. Um and the bike uh just works great. It works a little better for my style of wanting to be more aggressive, even yeah. though um, when I rode the Ducati, I was like, this is probably enough for anybody in the world, too. Yeah. Um, so I still err just a little bit on the side of the 890, but I am, like, so impressed with the Ducati Desert X, where the only thing that really bugs me about it is the unknown, number one. It hasn't been around that much. I don't know if they're going to have, you know, issues with any of, like, the the chassis handling the off-road rigors of things like even KTM goes through those learning curves. Sure. Just about every new model that comes out has something that comes up. We don't know about the Ducati Desert X long-term, but really the electronics are really annoying to me just because a, I don't know how to navigate them. I can't intuitively figure it out cause I haven't used it enough. So yeah. eh, is that a real problem for people that own a bike? Probably not. They're going to figure it out, but it, it's pretty annoying when you go in to make a setting change and you, you have to leave that setting change before you go back and yeah. make another setting change or even how to find in to get a setting change where the KTM's just, it's just intuitive. And, and, and the display is is big. You can see everything you need to see. Yeah. That's been a thing with Ducati, especially super bikes, for a long time. Yeah. You get into what you think is the mode and you're like, oh, cool, here's the road, I want to get into that mode. And then it goes, oh, no, no, you've got to go back out, go up here, go over there, <laughs> scratch the back it's, of your it's ear. It's another adventure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is insanely frustrating. Um, I don't know so, why that's still a problem, but uh, it, I mean, it, it's, it's it, might, it, it might not be a problem. No. It might just be their style and, the, you know, their ease of use for end consumer is – you're in our club. You'll figure it out. Yeah. You're going to be passionate about this bike for a long time. It's going to be intuitive to you eventually where yeah. anybody can get on a KTM in like three or four minutes. They'll be like, Oh, I get it. I know where to turn stuff on and off. Oh, yeah. So to me for the money, you're getting a lot of bike with the KTM yeah. and for the Ducati, you're paying a little bit of premium for the brand, yeah. which is probably worth it in this case. Um, but I still err on the Ducati or on the KTM just because it's reliable. I know everything about it and it performs a little bit more on that harder edge or more precise style that I'm more prone to writing. 
Yep. Yeah, really so, close. So and that's how this is going to go. Yeah. Like you're going to have a conversation with your friends about these two bikes or your parents or your, your dad and you, if you're riding and you're going to be like, I want this bike because of this. I want this bike because of this. And you're both going to be right. Mm, that's exactly. the hard part exactly I mean that's the thing now is like we've said this so many times here at yep. Cycle News is that people don't build bad bikes anymore like, not very often I mean it's f- exceedingly no. rare there's like one kind of not a not great part on some of them that's it bike suits you and, and that's mean, really with the electronics here it's like they're not yeah. bad electronics the traction control worked the wheelie control worked great all of the settings we manipulated and used off road were beneficial and effective the off-road you know abs system is great and a few years ago ktm was the only one that had off-road abs with dedicated algorithms to control the front end abs like that that was so mind-blowing a little while ago and now it's like oh we have off-road abs too the bike actually is performing above my expectation Mm -hmm. not my ability performing below the expectation of the bike so kudos to ducati honestly i don't get to ride a lot of ducatis because i'm not on the street that much and now it's like now i get to i hope because because the desert x was really fun yeah it was a good bike and it looks amazing like i've said this in every review i've ever written about the ktm 890 versus anything else i'm like well for sure the other bike looks better than 890 (laughs) It's it not. A, it's not a mystery that no. the, the looks of the eight ninety are a getting old, yeah. and b they were polarizing to begin with. That's so right. good. Yeah. Good job on the facelift on the KTM for next year. But yeah, that just not here does yet. Look, bitch, and that was oh, the, it's amazing looking. It's so cool. Yeah, when you they'd taken that style of the early nineties Dakar bikes that they new. were running at the time under the Kajiva brand. Yep, uh, with the Castiglione brothers when they owned. Kajiva, which then became yeah. Envy Augusta, which, I mean, the go down the rabbit hole there. Danny Laporte raced yeah, a Kajiva. Yeah, yeah dude. And like, there's a, I've seen a couple of those factory uh, bikes, and you're just like, oh, that's a just, it looks like an animal of a bike. Anyway, I digress. Uh, yep. So I'm going for, I'm going to go for the Ducati. You're going for the KTM. I'm going for the KTM. Uh, so it's clear, undecided. Clear as mud there. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to get what you pay for uh, with the Ducati, but you're going to have to have a learning curve to get through electronics. And your riding style, where you ride, should match the the stable, straight line nature of the Ducati a little more than you know the precise line of the KTM. Yep, just be honest with yourself when you figure out what you want to buy. As you should for everything. Yep. Cool, done. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Stay up.